This video is going to be the first part of a little series about using either zero tier or tail scale for software defined, kind of like a, they're a mesh between software defined networks and VPNs. They're alternative to VPNs. They're very flexible and they allow you to basically do all the networking that you would normally do sitting in your in your business or your home, you know, locally on a local network across the internet in different networks without any port forwarding rules, without punching any holes in your network. They use UDP hole punching with their outgoing connection on both ends. And imagine like these little squares are different networks and locations. They talk to the zero tier server, make outgoing connections, but then they'll start communicating directly. And your data is not actually all going through zero tier. Um, I'm going to make videos showing examples of applications you can use with these for like, I don't really game, but people use it for gaming. You use it for remote access, for unattended access of your computer. You know, remote control on your computer, you might could just use it to occasionally control, like say if you have a parent somewhere that you want to use their control. I mean, get on their computer to help them fix something. Maybe you have a server at home you want to be able to remote control. Maybe, you know, you want to be able to remote work from work if that's okay with your company or if it's your company, you want to be able to work from home, you could use this instead of paying somebody like log me in or some of the other companies, you can do this for free. And we'll go we'll make some sample videos to keep it shorter of different ways you can, you know, different tools you can use. But for, for this first video, we're just going to set up zero tier and, and demo it. Um, I have a virtual machine over here running. And I have the app already. You'll see that this one's sitting at the local address of 10.19.70.213. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install Zero Tier. Shouldn't take very long at all. It's a fairly straightforward app. I've been using Zero Tier for about four years or, or more it's been perfectly stable for me. Tail scale is another option and we're going to do a video on that but I wanted to go ahead and start with this one. Alright, if you see I ran this installer here now I have a a little uh, logo down here for zero tier. Now just by installing it nothing's happened. I'll need to connect to a network. So let's open the control panel you see we haven't joined a network. Let me reduce the size of this and go back to the computer I'm actually on. Uh, this computer is already connected to zero tier. You'll see. Um, I have a zero tier network, a demo network, and I'm going to delete this network after a while. And you see it's got the computer I'm on on attached. And it has an IP address 192.168.194.222. I'm going to add this remote computer to it now. You have to get whoever it is is going to send you a network ID and then you'll and look this can be tricky because if you try to copy right click and paste right here it doesn't work so use your command key like control V to paste in the network because it's you know it's not easy to type in and look I'm going to destroy this network after I finish filming the video so you know you can't you won't this isn't going to hurt help you try to get into my network you wouldn't be able to get in anyway. I have to approve the computer. But I'm going to click Join Network. And if you were connecting to like your offices or a friend's network, like y'all were going to share files or play a game together, that's all you would do. Now, the person on the other end, you see now I have a computer pending, uh, waiting to be allowed on. When I click that, you see it says Authorization here. When I click that checkbox, it's going to allow it on. And let's call this computer YouTube demo machine. And you see now it has a uh, address of 167. And you'll see now it's saying it is online and it is it is part of this network now. And it was that simple. So now I could ping 192. Dot, I forgot what the address was. 192.168.194 Let me write this down so I don't forget on 192.168.194 
and this machine is 222 and the other one is 167. So if I go on the remote sheet machine, I can ping 192.168.194.1 and you'll see it's answering. This machine could be next door, it could be 500 miles away, it could be in another country and it just would still work. So what you're, all you're going to do, all you need to do to make this work is use the zero tier IP address instead of your local network address and you'll see my computer's actual network on the physical network not the virtual network is 10.19.70.213 this 192.168.194 network does not exist in my house. I don't have any 192.168 addresses actually in my house. This is a virtual network. Um, now, I'm going to show you, it's not just pings that'll work. One thing's cool too is sometimes if you use a traditional VPN, stuff like this may not work because Microsoft will frequently the firewall and you'll have to go create rules to allow this to happen that they'll block things coming from different subnets or different networks. But it won't do it here because this isn't actually a different network. This computer has two network adapters now. It has the physical one and it has a virtual one. So it's actually those two computers are actually on, virtually on the same network even though they could be in different states. But I'm going to show you now I should be able to get back to that other computer at this address regardless of where it was at by you know I should be able to get to the file share on that computer 192 by using that address instead of the actual physical address 194.222 and there you see it works because it's for all intents and purposes that's a local separate network and now you'll see I can see I can see my files. This doesn't matter if it's inside your same house or not. It could be in a different country and it still work. That's what's so beautiful about this. So you can have you remote control the computers, you can remote control I mean, you can use regular shared files on a Windows network. You could game with somebody. You could do anything, basically, like you were sitting in the next desk or in the, you know, in the computer sitting two foot away plugged into the same router. Virtually, they're on the same router. So, look, let's close this session. And hope we don't turn off that computer. And let's go back to a remote desktop and try to use, instead of the address where it's physically, let's try to use 192.168.194.167. And there you'll see it's going to work. And now I have control of that computer again. This time I'm using the, if you look up here at the very top in the center in this blue bar, 192.168.194.167. That 10.19 address was only actually in my house and you would not be able to access that through my firewall. This will work through the firewall. It will work in another country. So it'll work 500 miles away just like I'm sitting here and it runs very fast also you can get nearly native you know almost line speeds through this so imagine you have a computer remote and you want to access it you know if you have Windows Professional or higher you can just turn on remote desktop like we're using here and all of a sudden you've got free remote access very good remote access I'm going to show you in a separate video how to do it with VNC instead of Windows Remote Desktop. So, you know, say if you have Windows Home, it doesn't come with this remote access, but there's free software you can use for that. You can do the Windows sh shared folders, game, anything basically you can do in your house is going to work with this. And, you know, it's free for up to, a, let's look at the pricing here. Now, if you run your own s server, you can run as many as you want for non-commercial use. Or, for a basic account is free 
for you know that they hosted on their hoster, not your own controller, for up to 50 computers. It says unlimited networks because you know you can have many networks, so you don't have to have just one network with all the machines you may ever want to use this with. You could have like one network for your family, maybe another network for a group of friends, and so on, and where they you don't want them to maybe talk to each other, so you could put them in different networks, but. For free, you you get up to 50 total machines on it. Then they have, you know, the professional, which goes up to $449 a year. That allows up to 500 machines. This is probably more aimed at consultants, business managers, big companies, people that are, or, you know, people for developers, IT professionals, people that have clients and you want to set up a network for one client and maybe they have 20 or 30 machines. Maybe you have a, another client that has 10 computers, so on and so on. Um, so even like where people log in nowadays with a VPN to their router, one reason you might want to use this, and you have road warriors, they call it, where you go traveling around the country and they did log into the server at your main office. One reason this can be really good is that this doesn't put a lot of stress on your router. Basically, it's just traffic flowing through. The router's not maintaining the encryption and all, all done by the separate software. So this traffic flows through your router very casually. It won't put a won't overload your network as easily. But anyway, that was just a quick one to get started, and I'm going to do some with the free type VNC. Uh, we'll even maybe do one on showing how to lock the firewall down so that it can on, so that the remote desktop can only be accessed uh, through zero tier and not on a local network. So say if you're in a coffee shop. And you don't want that network to, uh, you don't want people trying to access your remote desktop on the local network. You can tie the Windows Advanced Firewall to this network address range that you have. And then nobody would, uh, locally, would ever be able to even try to attack, attempt it. You can even use this on like virtual machines in the cloud with places like DigitalOcean so that you could, you could, uh, Talk to your machine, SSH into it, all as if it were locally inside your house or your office. We, we can do a series on those. Um, but I just want to do this first setup. It's really that easy to set up and accept. And, you know, you saw where I accepted here, but say if you were somebody and they wanted, and you were trying to join somebody else's network, all you had to do was, was, uh, you know, open the zero tier, install zero tier, open the zero tier control panel, and join a network. Put the network ID here, click join. The person on the other end that owns the network or controls the network will have to accept you, and then you're on. That's that simple. It's easy peasy. This shoots through firewalls. I've seen this shoot through extremely strict firewalls. Um, now, what keeps somebody from joining, joining your network is that. They could put your network ID in there, but they won't actually be able to communicate on your network until somebody, the owner of the network in the zero tier account checks this box and accepts them. So that's where the authentication happens. So I would highly recommend when you set up a zero tier account to turn on set two factor authentication with like Google Authenticator or, some, or Authy or some other authenticator. Because if you have a good strong password and second factor authentication, then you know it's pretty shaky.